Good morning, as we start the chitzat chitas of the day. Today we're holding the portion of Chai Sara, the 20th day of Cheshven. We are holding in the second reading of that portion. I mean, the third reading of the portion today is Tuesday. And we are in the story of Eliezer going to find a Shidduch for Yitzchak. And he's traveling towards his, the family of Avram Avinu. So the servant took 10 camels, Migmala Adenav, from the camels of his master, of Avram Avinu. He went and he took all the good of Avram Avinu in his hands. And he stood up and he went to, he rose and went to Aram Naraim, El Ir Nachar, to the city of Nachar. So as she says, the master's camels, they were distinguished from other camels by the fact that they would, he, they would go out muzzled. So to prevent them from robbery, they shouldn't eat in other people's fields. The whole Tuvadono and he had all the possession of Avram Avinu in his hand. What does that mean? He wore, wrote a gift deed to Isaac. He said, I'm giving Isaac all my possession as a gift. For everything he owned. So they would hasten to send a daughter. So in essence, of, of Yitzchak was a multi-millionaire because he received all the, all the possession of Avram Avinu. Aram Naraim. Aram is two rivers. It's situated between two rivers. And he made the, and he made the camels kneel, kneel outside the city. Alberta Mayim to the well of water. Lace Erev at the even time, evening time. Say Sashavis when the maidens go out to draw the water. And he said, He said, The Lord, the God of thy master Abraham. Hakre, no lefanai. Please cause to happen me to differ today. In my day, and do kindness with my master and Avram, with, with, with Avram Avinu. Behold, I'm standing at the water fountain. Water. And the daughters of the people of the city are coming out the door to, water, to draw water. So this is what I'm going to do, verse 14. And the young lady that will tell me I, I, I'm sorry, I'll tell her. Lower your pitcher and give me, I will drink. And she will say, stay, if she will give me to drink. Also, I'll give it to your, 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 your camels. That will prove that it's the right shidduch. Then I'll know that you've done kindness with my master. The Rasha says she is worthy of him. She will perform acts of kindness and she is fit to enter the house of Avram Avinu. The expression of Chacha means you chose him. It's an expression of supplication. Let me know through her. Yasisi Chesed, if she will be from the family to fit him, I will know that you have performed loving kindness. But he who tell him killed that before he even finished speaking. In Rivka Yetzir Yashi, and he behold, Rivka has come out. Ashi Yolda Lubsuel, which was born to Besuel, then Milka, the, the son of Milka, Ashis Nachar, the wife of Nachar. Achi Avram, Nachar is the brother of Abraham, it's even in the family. The Kada Shukma and a pitcher is on her shoulder. And this young lady was Tevis, Madam, she was a beautiful woman. Sula, she was a virgin. Vishla Yada, no man had ever known her, been intimate with her. And Teda Ayayna, she came down to the fountain. And she filled up the pitcher. And it came up. She came up. In that way or a natural way, 
because they used to, uh, the, in those days, they used to protect themselves uh, but promiscuous in an innatural way. And therefore, she was completely pure. And a servant ran towards her. Let me sip a little water from your pitcher. Give me something to, to, to drink. Why did he run towards her? Because he saw the water had risen towards her. So he realized she is a special girl. She's a Tadekis. Expression of swallowing, swallow, give me a swallow. So she said, drink. I do it in my master. She gave him to drink. When she finished giving him to drink, and she said, I'll go to give you camels. I didn't place this days until they're finished drinking. Here the word im. Ad im is used in the sense I share that. They will have finished uncle's renders until they have enough because the end of the drinking, they are drunk in their fill. And we know the camels can drink a lot. But the marcada, so she leaves, she hastened and she emptied her pitcher in the, in the throw. She ran again to fill it up again to. Uh, Make sure that she had enough for the uh, for all her camels. And actually, the throw is a hollow stone in which the camels drink. This man, the man was Eliezer was astonished at her. standing silently waiting to know. Whether the Lord has caused his way to prosper or not, he couldn't believe it happened so quickly. He was shocked that he asked, he said a prayer and it was answered right away. And now she says, Mishtar is an expression of des the desolation. It comes desolate, sure, the ground, so like shocked, it's like totally bewildered. As Ash the next last was astonished. He was astonished and startled because he saw his efforts on the average on the verge of succeeding, but he did not yet know whether she was Abraham's family or not. And then now she goes into to prove that this, the word Shia is a concept of astonishment. He was astonished at her. He was astonished about her. Verse 22. And it came about when the camels had finished drinking. The man took out a golden nosing, Becca, which was weighed half of a shekel. And two bracelets he put on a hand, a sort of zav mishkolam, which weighed ten gold shekels. So over here, Rashi says, over here, this is all a, a, a to show something that will happen in the future. This alludes to the shekel that the Israel will give per head a half a shekel. Shnei tzmidim, why do you give a two bracelet? An allusion to the two bracelets, two tablets that were given. A sort of zav that was they weighed ten gold shekels. That was that the Ten Commandments would be inscribed on the two tablets. Verse twenty-two. So he said to her, "Whose daughter are you?" Agidali, ayesh lecha beis avicha. Please tell me, is there a place of lodging in your father's house? Rashi says he asked her after giving her the gifts. He would, he like, could have, why would you do that? Why did you ask her first? But because he was confident that in the merit of Ram, the Holy One, blessed to be, had caused this way to his ways to prosper. So he was so shocked that he was sure this was a miraculous event. 
So therefore, he gave her the gifts, even not even asking who she was. Lalan lina achas, meaning light one night lodging, but she replied lalan and many lodging. Atayim about zivsul anechi. I am the daughter of Besuel, Ben Milka, the daughter, son of Milka, Ashiyodu the Nachas, who was born to Nachas. She gave her family in a she gave it in one spot, in one, one statement. She answered the first question first and the last question last. So that you see that she was smart. There's one of the, the in, in, in Obvious, you see how a, a smart person answers the first question first, the second question next, etc. So she answered like a very smart young lady. She said, we have both straw, we have plentiful. We have a place to lodge, as she said before, Lullum, you can stay many nights. Camel food is called mispa, such as straw and barley. The man kneeled and prospered so for God because now he realized that it was actually the brother Nachar was the brother of Ramavina. So this whole story happened so such a miracle. As we know, it says that he left that day, and he came that day, he met her right away. She this was not a normal situation, and he therefore he realized that it was totally a miraculous situation. Okay, that completes the Chumash of the day. We now go to the Tanya of the day, which the Alta Rebbe continues to explain the concept of what he what he started before, that the uh, uh, Aishas, um, what's, what's the Pasuk it says before, sorry. The uh, posse that he started, I was wondering where the posse that he started before was Aishas Chayel Ateres Baila. A woman of valor, she is the crown of her husband. So Chassidah says, Aishas goes on Teres Shabal Peh, the oral law, and the Baila is Teres Shabiksav, the written law. So the oral law is the crown of the, of the written law. So the oral law is the halacha. That's why the concept of halacha, kol hashen halacha is whoever learns the halacha, Jewish law, which is the oral law, will merit the will to come. So why? Because the oral law is the ratzel of the Abishta. The oral law is the is the is the is the is the is the is the, is the concept of the mashava dibra ma'isa. The thought, speech, and ultimately the action that is the garments of the neshama that gives the capability for the neshama to receive the light that it will receive through doing teda mitzvahs. Because the light that comes from a high, very high place, the neshama would not be able to receive this light without a garment that he wears. And the mitzvahs are the garments. And as he explained, that in the mitzvahs, there are three levels in every mitzvah. There's the machshava of the mitzvah, there's the dibur of the mitzvah, and there is the action of the mitzvah. And they are called levush and neshama. They are called the garments of the soul. And why are they called the garments of the soul? Because they are made from that light. And that's why this, this garment gives the soul the protection that it shouldn't lose itself but it actually should enjoy the light that is in Gan Eden or ultimately in Eilam So Now this light that it was hidden away for the righteous for the time to come is called the pleasantness of God. It's a pleasant, pleasurable thirst. In the delight of God. Actually, this is the first day of creation. The Amish created Ur, the first day of creation, Ur, not the Ur of the light of the sun, but as she says, that Ur, the Amish saw that Ur is too good for this world. He put it away for the Tzaddik and loss of loving. That they would receive this Ur, first of all, in Ghanaian, it's 120 years. 
But ultimately, the real Ur that they will receive will be the Ur, this light that will reveal to them in Oslo of Mashiach. And also the 400 worlds of lodging in which the tzaddikim delight. As we learned in this week's Pasha, 400 shekel kasev. That they brought the, they brought, the modest of Apela was bought for 400 shekel kasev. The white dark kasev, kasev. Zahav kasev, silver. The Aramaic phrase translates the world of lodging, of longing, as almin dik sufim. It's, a, 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 the, the, it's, it's considered a world of longing. So the ksufim, the root of the second word kesev, means not only silver, but longing. And the phrase nichsev nichsafti, I long, I long to the spirit of God. Hence the Kabbalah relates that the reference to four in the shekel kesev, what does it mean that he bought he, got, he bought this place of burial for 400 shekel kesev. It means he bought 400 worlds of lodging, of longing, I mean, see, whose spiritual delights are reserved for tzaddikim. So Avram Avinu, that's why it's brought down, that the Marasim Apela is the doorway to Ganeid. You can smell if you have, you have a special nose. You can smell in the Chevrain. You can smell Ganeid. Actually, a place in Chevr, there's a place in the in in the in the in the in the Ma'ara there. If you ever go visit there, they say this is the doorway to Gan Gan Eden. That's what they say. I don't know whatever that means, but they say they actually say, oh, right over here, this is the doorway to Gan Eden. I don't know who came up, it says right over there the doorway, but I there's a place, he, he, there's a crack actually. You maybe I, I I actually got down, I took a whiff, or tried to smell Gan Eden. So over there, Avram Avinu understood that that is the place of Gan Eden. So he, therefore, he gave them, he opened up the doorway. He gave, he bought, he bought for 400 shekel, because he, he said, and he bought it. And second, he asked 400 silver coins. He right away took it because he understood that this place is going to be 400, going to be able to reveal to think of 400 Concepts of delight. So in the Yeshbe Mal of Degas Rabbits, Maid Maiga, wherein the light comprised of many rungs and levels, one superior to the other. I'm sorry, within these 400 levels, there are many levels. So the, the light is unbelievable. But with the minute radiance. It descends from level after level to create this garment, but ultimately the Abishta also took that light and he created the garment of the soul, which is the mitzvah. This belongs to the lowest level of this light. It's considered, refers to external level or a chalayim, back, that a chmoshal is an. An analogy. But she calls it Zoya, and it's brought on the Zoya, the fresh chess on the base. I ain't sure make the smell of it. If you don't base, my dish in which the left, meaning that the light, which is the source of the garments, is the most external and hin and hindmost love. So ultimately, because ultimately this light comes as a garment of the machshav of a human being, the dibber of a human being, and the action of a human being. So you can imagine how this light has to come in to this garment. But ultimately, this light comes into the garment, and now it gives the garment the capability to shield the soul. So now, the soul of man is a faculty of pleasure. The soul takes pleasure in what it finds pleasurable. For example, the soul takes pleasure in, a con in, in the, the con conception of a new insight. 
or the like. In a niggin. So gets a lot of pleasure in a niggin. The external, the highmost aspect of the soul's power and state of delight is the faculty of will. Willing that which it wills. That's really the uh, ultimate aspect of the soul is, is the will of the soul. What is the will of the neshama? For example, something that's not painful. The soul doesn't want something that's painful. Why? Because pain is the opposite of delight. So the soul enjoys delight, whether it's in, as I said, in wisdom, in a music, in the delights that gives the soul delight. A person desires something because it gives him pleasure. Thus, pleasure is the inner or motivating aspect of desire, which is considered external to it, right? So you have, why do you desire something? Because you have that kind of a, of, of a will to it. You have that rotten. That's why it gives you a desire. So certain things I have a rotten to, that's why I have a desire in it. If I had a desire in learning, if I had a, if I had a will to learn, I would have a desire to it. I don't have a will to learn. I don't have a desire in it. So too in everything in life, the, the desire is the outer expression. That kind of the light is the outer expression. The rotsain is more the inner expression. So too, metaphorically speaking, is the same in the infinite by God, so to say. The supernal will is the external, the highmost asset, meaning the result of the above mentioned supernal delight. The pleasantness of God, the pleasurable thirst of the world of longing. So the Ratzin is the external aspect of what he really desires. Thus, when we state that the garments of the soul derive from the Achrayim and Ratzinus, the supernal delight, this means that they derived from the supernal will of God. So because he has that will, he has that delight. Though through that the supernal delight and the supernal will, by God they are one. Shuhu is part of it. By human being, you might be able to separate it. But by the Abishta, it's one. His will and his delight are one. It's not like the will of man, that his will and his delight is two different things. Really, you can't compare the will and delight of a human being to the will and the delight of God, because there's no comparison between them. As he says over here, man's will is not wholly one with the personal self. So man's will is not really his delight. If it's one if it is one of the soul's faculties that he possesses. By contrast, God and his will are one. How then can we differentiate between, the, between pleasure and will? Saying that God's pleasure is internal and his will is external. Like by a human being, his pleasure is internal and his will is, into, is external. Nevertheless, as the Alta Rebbe said this many times, the Abisha talks in the ways of man. And, if the, and, and, and that's the way the Torah talks. The Torah talks in the way man talks. Because the Abishta wanted to, for the ear to hear what it can hear. He wasn't talking in, in, in sign language. The Abishta wanted a person should listen. And therefore, he needed to speak in the Torah like humans understand. So that's why, just like a human understands the difference between will and delight, so too he said, God has his will and his delight. Even though there's no comparison between them, but that's what we can understand. Which we give the analogy 
of the soul of man, which has the concept of will and delight, the Chochma Bina, and has the concept of wisdom and understanding. So too we say God has wisdom, God has understanding, God has will, and God has light. delight. Even though our wisdom is not God's wisdom, our understanding is not God's understanding, our delight is not God's delight, our will is not God's will, it's far different. There's no comparison really between the two at all. But that's the way the Torah talks. And God had the will. And God had a delight. So the Torah talks, and the closest way I can understand that is from my own soul. So that's the analogy. Even though the analogy doesn't fit the subject. Just as man, pleasure is excited as internal and will as external, so do we describe the corresponding attribute of Rav, that by God, his pleasure is internal and his will is external, even though by God, you can't separate internal and external. Only in a finite thing, you can separate between external and internal. Maybe it's all one, external, internal, it's all one. This is ultimately evident. When a person can see some wonderful new insight, he has an epiphany. He has an unbelievable revelation of knowledge. At that moment, when he just figured out something, it's creates a delight in his mind. So it's unbelievable, right? He found out something that he was been searching for years, something he didn't understand, and suddenly he realizes the answer. The aha moment, as we say. Aha, I have an aha moment. And that creates a great kind of, that creates in me a great delight. So what does that prove? McLeod, thus it follows, that the capacity of pleasure surpasses far the faculty of intellect. So what does that show? That in essence, the light is higher than intellect because I only came to the light if I got the intellect. It's merely vested in the faculty of intellect and wisdom. But because if I had no wisdom, I wouldn't have the light. But really, the, the, the wisdom brings about the light. That means the light is deeper than wisdom, is higher than wisdom. <speaking in Hebrew> Thus, when a man feels a subject of intellect and wisdom, that he's, he apprehends and understands it well, he then also senses the faculty of pleasure. Then he has pleasure, which is vested in the subject of wisdom. And so it is with everything in life. I mean, if a person understands, you know, uh, the concept of a painting, he just he sees the beauty in the painting. He has the light. If you don't understand it, you you have no comprehension in the painting. You look at it, you say, oh, whatever. What about what is a painting? Well, I go crazy over it. Like you know, so this is a million dollar painting, ten million, fifteen million. Why? I wouldn't pay fifty dollars for it, right? Because I don't understand paintings. So since I don't understand paintings, I don't know the light in paintings. But if, but but most of us, if we give us a, a, a great understanding, is something that we're trying to understand. We greater great. We receive. We ultimately receive a great light. Now you understand why the Zoya says when Mashiach comes. The will to come will be the level, of course, be at the level of understanding. Right now, we have a lot of wisdom in God, but we don't understand it, and that's why we don't have the light in God. We might have a lot of understanding, a lot of information, a lot of godly words, a lot of godly concepts. We really don't understand it, and that's why we don't delight in it. Mashiach comes will be on the level of understanding. You imagine that we will understand godliness. 
And that's yeah. why we light. <laughs> that's why we will have a delight in godliness. Because we will understand godliness. Because then with the manifestation of Chochmah revealed the concept of Chochmah. And that's why, that's why we're, until Mashiach comes, where, is, where, do you, where can you only receive this Tainut? Is in Gan Eden. So that's why Tzadikim received the, word, the reward in Gan Eden. Because even Tzadikim, their true understanding is only in Gan Eden. Because they, as long as they're in this world and in the Galos, they, their understanding is also limited. And that's why they have to divest themselves from the physical. And they have to go to Shemayim. And then they get an understanding in what they, in, in all the Torah that they learn on such a higher level that they get the Tainu, they get the delight. And Mitchell Mashiach comes, we'll be able to accomplish that without separating ourselves from our bodies. We'll be able to stay in our body and get that understanding. She be, because we'll, we'll be refined bodies then. Can you imagine? Now, now the Torah derives from the wisdom of God, and the Torah the and God are one. So, as, and the, so thus, through gaining the perception of Pneumius in a manner in which his soul apprehends it in Gan Eden, we apprehend the essence of godliness, and this delight itself, as the Rebbe adds, is utterly inward, as explained above. The soul gains an apprehension of God's infinite light. So that's why the soul receives a delight. In order it to be able to absorb this degree of illumination, Going back to the beginning, it must be equipped with the protective and receptive garments of mitzvahs, as previously explained. So, so this delight will be so powerful that the soul will totally nullify itself to the light, to this delight. But the Avishto didn't want the soul to nullify itself, even in Eden. So the Avish made garments. And these garments protect the soul that it should not nullify itself to this earth, to this tainu, and still stay, have the identity of, of the soul. And that's the beauty of a mitzvah here in this world, that it gives it, it becomes the garment of the soul. And Ultimately, these garments of the soul is not only for Ganadim, it's also Elam Haba, because it continues so that this, this garments protect the Neshama, so that the Neshama of Mitzvah Mashiach comes and we will be revealed as the light, even in a goof, even while we're still physically here in the world, will be all because of the mitzvahs and the Torah, what we did in this world, in Machshava, in the thought of a mitzvah, in Dibur, in the speaking of Torah. And ultimately, in Maisa Mitzvah, is an actual doing of every Mitzvah. That completes the Tanya, the beautiful teaching of the Alter Rebbe of today, of Tanya. Today is Chof Cheshven, which happens to be the birthday of the Rebbe Rashab, the fifth Lubavitcher Rebbe, who was born today, 1860, I believe. And um, it's his birthday today, who established um, uh, the Yeshiva of Lubavitch was established to the Rebbe Rashab in Russia. And he established it to be able to learn Chassidus and Nigla together, that they would learn both the esoteric part of the Torah and the revealed part of the Torah, and they would, grow, they would put it together and be able to enhance one another, the Chassidic, Chassidut and Kabbalah, together with the Gemara, and Allah, etc., and they would come together. You see the Alter Rebbe, the old Siddhis, brings about Teshub, Iksav, and Teshub al and, and, and Chasidut, and Kabbalah, they all come together as one, and they hands one the other. So today, the Tilim of the day, of the 20th day of the month, 
is a chapter 97, 98, 99, 100, 101, 102, and 103. So from 97 to 103 in your Psalms, and you will have done till the chitas of the day. I wish you all a wonderful, beautiful, happy, and healthy day. And we'll meet you all tomorrow, 8 a.m., for the chitas of the day.